I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today we shall discuss about the pressure crank angle diagram and then we shall define several efficiencies in the context of internal combustion engine operation. So, uh, if we recall the operation of four stroke cycle engines for both SI and CI engines, we had seen that the rise in pressure essentially due to combustion is very important and the rise in pressure inside the cylinder because of the combustion is of prime interest to both designer as well as operator. Now, you can understand that the rise in pressure is very important to the designer because the work output will essentially you know a function of uh, the rise of pressure that is uh, you know develop uh, that will be developed inside the cylinder. On the other hand the rise in pressure due to combustion inside the cylinder is again a concern to the operator. Why it is so? We shall discuss today that if the rise in pressure inside the cylinder is high, very very high, then it is again not desirable from the perspective of the smooth operation of engine. So, in one side the rise in pressure is important because the work output from the engine is dependent on the rise in pressure. So, definitely it is an important parameter to the designer. On the other hand, it is also equally important to the operator because the pressure rise inside the cylinder should not be excessively high otherwise it will create several issues from the perspective of the smooth engine operation. So, now let us briefly review what we have learned from the basic cycle you know that uh, we have discussed in the context of four stroke cycle engines. right. So, this is say we have one spark plug we are talking about four stroke SI engine. This is exhaust, this is spark plug and this is intake manifold through which charge that is air plus fuel mixture. That charge is charge is drawn into the cylinder. So, the charge is drawn into the cylinder during intake stroke. So, now if we try to draw right. Crank is rotating in this manner. So, the sole objective 
is to get converted the reciprocating motion of the piston into the rotary one and that is why this crank and connecting rod mechanism is here. Now, if we assume another position wherein piston will be shifted towards right because it is rotating in the clockwise direction and if it is the revised position. So, say if it is the revised position of the piston and it has displaced say by angle theta. So, if we give name, so this is B and this is A. So, piston has you know traversed a distance. So, piston is you know piston has a linear displacement inside the cylinder which is equal to the angular displacement of the crank by an angle theta. Now, it is having continuous uh, movement between these two positions. Why we are interested to draw the rise in pressure in this crank angle with, with a change in crank angle in p theta plane that is the you know pressure crank angle diagram. So, this is theta and this is pressure. We shall map the rise in pressure vis a vis the angular displacement of the crank and that will give us an information about the rise in pressure during the combustion process and which is very important to the designer. As I said this is not only an important parameter to the designer, but also important to the operator. So, now let us discuss about the basic you know cycle and several strokes. So, you know that intake stroke, so exhaust valve will remain closed, intake valve is open and piston is traversing from T D C to B D C and air fuel mixture is drawn into the cylinder and that is the intake stroke. When piston is at VDC that is at the end of the intake stroke, intake valve will be closed that means both valves are closed now and piston will you know travel back from VDC to TDC that is the compression stroke that we have discussed so many times. At the end of the compression stroke you know we have discussed that if it is, so we are discussing today in the context of SI engine but if it is CI engine instead of air fuel mixture only fresh air should be drawn into the cylinder. And towards the end of the compression stroke fuel would be supplied into the cylinder by a fuel nozzle. Fuel will be supplied in the form of spray in the in a spray pattern. Now, since we are discussing today about the four stroke cycle SI engine that means, we have taken air fuel mixture in inside the cylinder during intake stroke and that is getting compressed during compression stroke. So, when piston is reaching towards T D C at the end of the compression stroke, we need to switch on the spark plug and that is the initiation of combustion. So, we are igniting the charge which is there rather we are igniting the compressed charge which is there in the vicinity of the spark plug and that initiation that is that is the ignition. So, that initiation of ignition will eventually ignite the entire compressed charge and entire combustion will be completed. And by that time we have assumed that the piston is almost instantaneously there in at the TDC. So, as if the volume is remaining constant and it is because of this assumptions we could you know represent the combustion process that is heat addition process by a constant volume process in PV plane that we have discussed in one of the previous classes. So, when there is a rise in when there is a combustion and we have seen that the sole purpose of having this combustion is to increase the pressure and temperature of the substance inside the cylinder and that high pressure eventually create a thrust on the piston face and that will allow piston to go back from T D C to V D C and that is what we have seen is uh, termed as power stroke. So, 
if we consider four different strokes that is intake, compression, power and exhaust, out of these four strokes we are getting power from only this stroke. So, the rise in pressure inside the cylinder due to combustion is very very important to understand the thrust that will be acting on the piston face and eventually what would be the work output from the engine. And it, it is because of this reason we need to know what would be the rise in pressure during the revolution of the you know crank that is essentially due to the movement of the piston instantaneous movement of the piston between these two locations during the entire process. So, let us now draw the you know p theta diagram that is pressure crank angle diagram. So, this is basically this diagram is pressure crank angle diagram. So, sole purpose of understanding about the rise in pressure due during the you know entire one cycle is to know about the rise in pressure subsequently the work output from the cycle and that information we can get if we try to draw the rise in rather the pressure as pressure of the working substance inside the cylinder as the piston is moving between these two locations and as if the that linear motion is equal equivalent to the rotary motion of the crank that is in the uh, p theta plane. So, if we try to draw the uh, pressure this is B D C, this is T D C and this is again B D C okay. and this is theta plane. Okay. Now, we are interested in the quantity pressure that is developed during the you know uh, process. So, what we can draw is p theta plane. So, you can understand that the rise in pressure during the move reciprocating movement of the piston, we are trying to get that information in this you know uh, plane that is p theta plane. That means, uh, as if the piston is moving between B d c to T d c and T d c to B d c. So, that reciprocating motion is now mapped in this plane that is as the piston is moving in uh, uh, as, as if the piston is moving in this uh, angular uh, that is crank uh, angular rot uh, rotation of the crank. So, the reciprocating movement of the piston is equivalent to the angular movement of the crank and that is why you are trying to draw it in a, this p theta plane. So, this stroke is compression stroke. and the piston is again coming from T d c to B d c that is the expansion or power stroke, expansion or power stroke. Okay. So, first of all if we go back to the previous slide piston will be having movement between these two locations. Say the first case is there is no spark plug we have taken charge inside the cylinder and we are compressing it and then expand you know there is no uh, initiation of the conversion by switching on the spark plug as if charge is there we are bringing piston from B d c to T d c and again we are allowing piston to go back from T d c to B d c. So, if we do this by a virtual external motor then this curve will be like this. So, this is called motoring curve. So, say this would be like this. So, this is called motoring curve. Now, 
no you can see that if we bring piston from BDC to TDC that is intake stroke is there now. So, intake stroke entire space is filled in with the uh, fresh charge and both valves are now closed. We are bringing piston from BDC to TDC you know as I told you that this curve is generated you know by you know as if an external motor is rotating this crank. So, this curve is generated. So, that is why it is called motoring curve by virtually uh, as if an external motor is running this crank. So, what will happen you know both valves are closed piston is coming from BDC to TDC that is compression stroke pressure will rise and that is what we can see that the pressure is rise and further when piston is coming back from TDC to BDC that is expansion stroke and pressure will fall. So, this is the motoring curve. Now, what will happen? We will consider three different cases. First case say now we have so this case is that when there is no sparking. Now, we have the real case that is spark plug. So, when piston is coming from BDC to TDC we can switch on the spark plug as the piston is you know approaching TDC right. So, it is it is it is con, you know allow it is it is you know quite common that spark, spark plug switch is on when piston is about to reach a TDC because it needs the entire process that is switching on spark plug and the initiation of combustion needs some finite amount of time and at that time piston will be reaching a TDC and it is ensured that entire combustion would be completed. So, the volume is remaining constant. Now, I will discuss three different cases. First case is say this is the case. So, this is the spark position say case 1. So, 1 so I am writing spark position I am writing optimum optimum spark position ok. And if we switch on spark plug here then you know that the curve will not be like this instead it is because of the combustion there will be a rise in pressure inside the cylinder. So, the rise in pressure will be a function of rate of combustion. So, what is the rate of combustion that is if the rate of combustion is very high then the total combustion time will be less and rise in pressure will be high. So, you can correlate the rise in pressure uh, you know to the rate of combustion. So, if the spark flag position is here at 1 that is optimum spark position then that would be this you know pressure rise. So, it is see this is peak pressure. So, I am just putting a you know circle small symbol. So, this is you know peak pressure. So, I am writing P i that is peak pressure corresponding to point 1. Now, you can see that the rise in peak pressure is slightly higher from TDC. It is again important that designers should not allow that the pressure rise would be maximum before piston reaches at TDC. If it is the case then to reach a TDC extra, extra resistance that will be faced by the piston is again not desirable. So, the rise in pressure should be either at TDC or closer to TDC, but not before TDC. Next we are considering one uh, another po point that is say point 2 say here. So, spark is retarded. So, that means position 1 is optimum position, but if we retarded the sparking position that is if you delayed the sparking position. So, as if when piston is almost closer to TDC we are allowing spark to uh, occur and then you know 
instantaneous pressure rise due to combustion will be like this. So, again I am marking one circle and that is P 2. So, this is this is the rise in pressure. What you can see is that, so we have considered two different cases and last case I will consider that is case 3, we can take another point here. Point 3 that is spark is advanced. So, as if we have an advanced the spark in position and so this would be the say this is the So, I am writing this at the peak pressure. Right? So, what we can see from this pressure? a uh, p theta diagram is that in all these three cases it is because of this parking there is an instantaneous rise in pressure inside the cylinder and it is because of this rise in pressure we are getting work output maximum work output. If the sparking is optimum then we can see that the rise in pressure is there, but it is little away from TDC in all these cases the maximum pressure or peak pressure is occurring when piston is little air from TDC that is when piston is again you know coming back from TDC. As I said you if we allow if the designer is designing the system in such a way that the peak pressure will be there when piston is you know yet to reach at TDC it is not a desirable case because the rise in pressure even before reaching piston at TDC will create external resistance to the movement of the piston. So, now we can see that if you consider case 2 case 2 would be even more you know uh, uh, I can say desirable in terms of the maximum power output, because the rise in peak pressure the rise in pressure is high and also peak pressure is high. So, if rise in pressure is high then the average pressure would be high and that is why the work output would be high. On the other hand if we consider Parking sparking position that is 0 0.3, then you can see that the rise in pressure is not very high, and also the rise in pressure is shifting towards it, you know, it, it, it is shifting little away from TDC. So, P3, the location of P3 is greater than location of P1 uh, is greater than P2. So, if we advance this parking position, the rise in pressure is low not only that the location of peak pressure is shifting little away from TDC. Right? On the other hand if we retard this parking position and consider parking you know consider the sparking position is 2. So, what we can see that the rise in pressure is excessively high and that is, that is again important because we may get uh, maximum work, work output. But this excessive rise in pressure, though that may uh, help to get maximum work output, it is not also desirable. So, I had written already the one is the optimum spark position. Why? So, if it is 3, maximum pressure rise is less, work output would be less, but since the rise in pressure is not very high. So, the operator will not feel the jerky operation. On the other hand, if we consider 3, maybe the maximum pressure rise is you know very high, work output will be very high, but also the peak pressure is very high and the sudden rise in pressure is also very high, the curve is very stiff and it is because of this sudden rise in pressure the operator can feel a jerky motion. So, though case 2 would be you know desirable 
if we consider the work output, but it may not be desirable to the operator because the operator will feel a jerky motion. On the other hand case 3 though it is not a you know operator may not the operator should not feel a jerky motion because it is you can see the rise in pressure is not very high you know sudden rise in, sudden rise uh, of pressure is not there, but you know that the maximum pressure rise is also less. So, the work output will be less considering these two. So, as I said you the rise in pressure during the entire process pertaining to a four, pertaining to four stroke cycle engines is important to both designer and the operator. So, to the to designer 0.3 would be good because he, he is he or she is designing the engine in such a way that the maximum pressure rise and consequently the work output would be high, but the operator will feel a jerky motion. So, considering these two aspects it is recommended that pressure rise should be optimum so that the work output would be optimum, but the rise in pressure should not be very sudden. So, so that the operator uh, can feel a smooth uh, motion. So, basically considering these two it is recommended that optimum spark position should be 1 that means, rise in pressure is also optimum work output be, uh, work output would be optimum also the peak pressure rise and sudden rise in pressure is not there and operator will not feel the jerky motion. So, as I said why this diagram is important only to understand the rise in pressure and also whether the pressure rise is sudden or not to understand the stiffness of the curve in p theta plane. These two are very important from the perspective of efficient as well as smooth operation of the engine. Now, question is I told you one important thing if the rise in pressure is either point uh, if we consider point 2 or case 2 the rise hardened rise in pressure is very high and also the rise in pressure is high. Now, question is if it is very high then uh, though the work output would be maximum, but it is not recommended uh, because it may have it may lead to a jerky motion. Another important problem it uh, there will be considering a sudden rise in pressure is the detonation. What is detonation? You know that detonation is something which is related to the pre ignition or auto ignition. So, if we consider the four stroke cycle SI engine you know that we have understood that when the charge is getting compressed as the piston is moving from BDC to TDC you know the charge which is there closer to or in the vicinity of spark plug will be ignited first because this is the initiation of the uh, combustion or ignition. Now, if the rise in pressure is very high then that pressure rise will now create just like a uh, force is acting on the farthest compressed charge that is the charge which is there in the vicinity of the piston phase. And after a few cycles of operation you know that already the piston face cylinder walls are you know having high temperature. So, these spots will create just like you know an artificial spark plug and you know as the main frame front will be coming from the you know you know uh, spark plug area secondary flame fronts will also appear from these you know hot spots. And the appearance or the you know onset of secondary flames will be triggered if the rise in pressure is very high. So, if the rise in pressure is very high and it is if it is sudden then not only it will create a jerky motion, but also it will try to you know strengthen the initial or onset of secondary flames and those secondary flames. So, let me explain. Uh, so, basically you know that if it is the spark plug you can understand that a secondary flame will produce like this. So, as if the secondary flame is moving from the as I said you that combustion is nothing but. So, it, it is it when can we understand that combustion has started. So, it is basically 
the appearance of a visible flame. So, when combustion has started from this particular location that is the uh, location close to the spark plug, the main flame front will proceed towards the you know remaining part of the. Uh, so, if it is let me uh, draw here. Say this is so this is the piston face. So, this is T D C. So, piston has already reached at T D C. So, total charge is now compressed, both valves are closed and the main flame front is you know traveling from sparking area towards the entire part of the combustion chamber. Now, as I said you if the rise in pressure is very high that pressure front this flame front as if creating a you know more pressure on the charge which is there you know on the piston face and in the farthest area of the combustion chamber. What will happen you know that secondary flame the chance is there that the secondary flames will be uh, you know there because of the rise in temperature of the cylinder walls also the rise in temperature uh, of the piston face surface. Now, that further rise in pressure will trigger the easily or easy onset of the secondary flames and what will happen you know the secondary flames if I if I used another color to represent it. So, secondary flames may be secondary flame is you know secondary flame has initiated here and that secondary flame will travel like this. So, always chance is there that the secondary flame will generate. Now, if the rise in pressure is excessive and it is sudden that sudden rise in pressure will also help to initiate all these secondary flames. So, why I am telling this the secondary flames will produce they also will you know travel and a time will come when these two flames. So, secondary flames and the primary flame. So, the, the secondary flame will collide with the primary flame and that is that is again not a desirable phenomenon and that is known as detonation. So, basically this is auto ignition or pre ignition. Pre ignition you know as I said you that it is not necessary that uh, only ignition will start due to the you know spark which is created by spark plug. Secondary flames also will produce due to the temperature of these hot spots, but as I said you the excessive rise in pressure and also sudden rise in pressure will trigger easy onset of the secondary flames due to pre ignition. And if that is there these two flames will collide each other and will lead to an undesirable phenomenon which is known as detonation. Now, let me tell you so this is not a desirable phenomenon at all and sometimes you should not be confused with detonation and knocking. So, detonation is solely due to pre ignition and auto ignition and it is not a desirable phenomenon because it may lead to damage of mechanical components overheating also with you know kind of abrasion of the uh, material. But knocking is something which is which should not be confused with detonation. Knocking is basically you know that is the you know improper initiation of the ignition, improper initiation of the combustion as a you know uh, consequence to the ignition and that means, the fuel air mixture does not initiate the combustion properly and the knocking is you know uh, something where you know surf noise is you know uh, you know uh, produced and that is solely due to the improper initiation of the combustion and uh, of course, of the fuel air mixture and it should not be 
confused with the detonation. So, these two things are not same. Detonation is due to the pre ignition and auto ignition as we have discussed today that these two flames will collide each other and the secondary flame will be produced due to the auto ignition or pre ignition. And if these two flames collide each other, there will be a uh, you know an audible noise and together with that uh, erratic pressure rise will lead to mechanical damage you know and also overheating. But the knocking is solely due to improper initiation of the combustion due to the spark uh, uh, due to the ignition of course by a spark plug and it is because of this the fuel air does not initiate the combustion properly within the combustion chamber and these two things are completely different. The uh, you know phenomenon knocking is also not a desirable, soft noise is produced and also the consequence of this phenomenon is that the uh, you know overheating also you know kind of erosion of the material from the piston face due to knocking. So, these two you know uh, events are not desirable in the context of internal combustion engine. Okay. So, we have talked about detonation and knocking, detonation this is due to pre ignition or auto ignition. On the other hand, we have discussed about knocking. So, this is due to improper initiation of combustion. So, this is the improper initiation of the combustion you know uh, which is not important improper initiation of combustion as a response to ignition by a spark plug. Okay. So, these two things we have discussed, these two events are not desirable and these two should not be confused. Okay. Finally, we will discuss about the efficiencies. So, efficiencies of internal combustion engine. First of all, we have already discussed about thermal efficiency, because we have we could drive the mathematical expression of thermal efficiency of both auto and diesel cycles that we have uh, you know discussed in the previous classes. So, this eta thermal that is nothing but w dot net w dot net by q dot in or w dot net by q dot in. So, this is the thermal efficiency that we have you know studied in second law of thermodynamics. Now, we have we can write so, you can understand if we write in the rate form. So, W net by Q in is also the thermal efficiency, but we have written this expression in the rate form. So, this is rate of net work that is the work done. So, now we have discussed that the work available inside the combustion chamber or cylinder is not equal to the work which is available at the shaft work available inside the cylinder is the indicated work, while the work available at the shaft is the in, you know brake work. So, accordingly thermal efficiency also can be defined in terms of the rate of work done that is why I, we have written in terms of in, in the rate form whether the work is indicated work or the brake work. So, eta thermal indicated i it is equal to. So, 
you can understand that it is indicated work. So, rate of work done is the power. So, I can write this is indicated power divided by q dot in. So, it is nothing but you know that uh, uh, m dot f into q c v calorific value of the fuel. So, if it is indicated, so rate of work done is the power. So, if we calculate that power inside the cylinder that is indicated power and if we use that power to define this thermal efficiency that would be the indicated thermal efficiency. So, that is why I have written n dot n thermal eta thermal i. On the other hand, so this is indicated thermal efficiency. Similarly, we also can write break thermal efficiency eta thermal break. So, the work the power you know we will consider the w dot net which is available at the shaft. So, that is break power, break power again this is at the cost of the input energy that is mass flow rate of fuel into calorific value of fuel. So, I am writing here that this is the mass flow rate of fuel and this is calorific value of fuel. Okay. So, this two we have defined thermal efficiency and this thermal efficiency, thermal efficiency can be defined in terms of the uh, break work or indicated work. And finally, we can write mechanical efficiency. So, eta mechanical you know that the work which is available at, available at the shaft is less than the work which is produced inside the cylinder because some part of that work is utilized to overcome the losses, frictional losses. So, this is can be defined break power divided by indicated power. So, indicated power is always greater than break power. So, break power is always less than indicated power by a factor and that factor is not equal to 1. So, it is it depends on the in, you know designer so, that is why this is called mechanical efficiency. Finally, I will write one most important term that is volumetric efficiency. Eta volume. So, if we go back to the previous slide you can see that we are you know you know taking charge into the engine cylinder during intake stroke and this charge is nothing but air fuel mixture. So, fuel will not you know uh, ignite or if we can ignite the fuel by a spark plug, but if we need to have proper or efficient conversion and fuel here we are using you know spark plug to ignite, but you know that this combustion as I said this is nothing but the appearance of visible flame that combustion needs presence of air that is oxygen and that oxygen will come from the air. So, we need to supply sufficient amount of air for burning this fuel and we have discussed in one of the previous classes that stoichiometric air fuel ratio. So, to burn per kg of fuel how you know how much oxygen is required and if we need to get this amount of uh, oxygen. So, what would be the amount of air should be and that should be supplied and uh, of course, to the engine cylinder. So, for efficient combustion we need to supply sufficient amount of air. Issue is, so what we can define you know that mechanical efficiency we have discussed, we have discussed thermal efficiency, but if the combustion is not proper, if the combustion is improper then though we are supplying certain amount of energy, but the efficiency will not be. Uh, you know the efficiency when you are trying to calculate will not be correct. So, we need to ensure that the combustion should be efficient 
only then we can calculate the remaining other efficiencies. So, that means, the input energy that we are you know uh, intending to supply in terms of the uh, fuel by, by burning fuel to ensure that that input energy should be correct one we need to ensure that the combustion would be efficient. So, volumetric efficiency from the name itself you understand it can be defined by both volume of air and mass of air. So, you can see that the volume of air that is so the volume actual volume of air fuel mixture if it is SI engine because today we are discussing everything in the context of SI engine. So, actual volume of air fuel mixture drawn into the cylinder. So, I am writing air fuel mixture drawn into the cylinder and then if we allow piston to come from T D C to V D C as, as if we are creating a space to have that air fuel mixture into the engine cylinder. So, theoretically maximum volume of air fuel mixture that could be drawn into the cylinder. So, if we allow piston to come from T D C to V D C we are allowing or we are creating a space that means, we are creating a space to get theoretically maximum volume of air fuel mixture. So, what would be the theoretically maximum volume of volume of air fuel mixture that could be drawn into the cylinder is not equal to the actual volume and this two the ratio of these two quantities is the volumetric efficiency. So, this is theoretical theoretically maximum volume of air fuel mixture that could be drawn into the cylinder. So, this can be written actual volume by theoretical volume. What is the theoretical volume? That is the displacement volume, you know, because we are trying to get piston from T D C to V D C that is the theoretical volume. So, this is V D and what about V A? So, this is M r T A by P A divided by V D and this V D is displacement volume. What would be the actual volume of air that is that depends on the ambient temperature and pressure. So, M r T A by P A. So, basically uh, that is that is the you know function of local temperature and pressure. So, this is the definition of volumetric uh, efficiency, but we also can write this volumetric you know volumetric efficiency eta volume in terms of mass. So, this eta volume also can be written m dot f divided by m dot what theoretically maximum volume. So, this is m dot a by m dot d. So, right now mass of air fuel mixture or mass of you know charge getting into the cylinder to the you know theoretically mass of air that should fill the displaced volume. So, this is mass of air fuel mixture if it is SI engine, if it is CI engine mass of air getting into the cylinder to the you know mass of air fuel mixture that is filling the displaced volume. What is the displaced volume you know? The displaced volume is when piston is coming from T D C to V D C right. So, we also can write this quantity like this and you know that what is m dot a? m dot a is basically you know we have to uh, I write m dot a. Now, what is m dot d? So, that is rho a 
into displacement volume into n by n, n is rpm, n is number of strokes. So, if it is two stroke or four stroke cycle engine that will accordingly depend. Now, issue is the mass of air that should fill the displaced volume that depends on the number of stroke and the revolution. So, this is also used to define the volumetric efficiency. So, to summarize today's discussion, we have discussed about the need of p theta curve in the context of internal combustion engine operation. We have seen that the rise in pressure which is developed due to combustion inside the cylinder is very important to the designer, but also it is equally important to the operator. And then we have defined several efficiencies those are important to you know measure the performance of internal combustion engines and we have seen that mechanical efficiency, thermal efficiency and volumetric efficiency these three efficiencies are uh, sufficient to you know measure the performance of the internal combustion engine. With this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.